Hello, brothers and sisters. God bless. Hope all is well with you. I was going to talk about the doctrine of an individual effectual personal calling that we get that the scripture teaches in the New Testament by the Apostle Paul that he got from the teachings of Jesus. So we're going to go ahead and get right into the scripture. This is John chapter 10, starting at verse 14. This is Jesus speaking. I am the good shepherd, and I know my own, and my own know me, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And I have other sheep that are not of this fold, and I must bring them also, and they will hear my voice, and they will become one flock with one shepherd. Now at this time, Jesus' ministry is to the Jews. He said, at this point, I came only to the lost sheep of Israel. But he says, I have other sheep, not of this fold. And he's speaking of Gentiles. And he says, I have other sheep that are not of this fold, and I must bring them also, and they will hear my voice. So Jesus is talking to Jews, but he's also talking about future Gentile sheep that will come in. Sheep not of this fold, not of the Jewish fold. So he says, I have other sheep that are not of this fold. I must bring them also, and they will hear my voice. Now this is the doctrine that Paul taught in 1 Corinthians, where he says, Consider your own calling, brethren. Not many wise, not many noble, not many mighty, according to the flesh, have been called. But God has chosen the weak things of the world to shame the mighty. God has chosen the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. The debased and the despised things God has chosen and the things that are not, to nullify the things that are, that no man may boast before God, but by his own doing you are in Christ Jesus. So the scripture teaches there's a personal, individual, effectual, spiritual calling. Consider your own calling, brethren. Not many wise, not many noble, not many mighty according to flesh have been called. So when Jesus is speaking to these Jews, he's saying that my sheep will hear my voice. That is, they will receive a personal, individual, effectual calling. See, when Jesus says my sheep will hear my voice, he's making a definite statement that they will absolutely hear his voice. So if we consider when Jesus says all the Father gives to me will come to me and the one who comes to me I'll by no wise cast out. Jesus is saying, all the Father gives will come, another absolute statement. Jesus says they're given before they even come to him, and he's saying that all the Father gives will come. Every single one of them, all the Father gives will come. So when we consider what Jesus is saying here in John chapter 10, he's saying all the sheep that are given him among the Jews and among the Gentiles through the course of time, other sheep, even not of this fold, of the Jewish fold, will come to him. All the Father gives to me will come to me. So he's speaking about future Gentiles that will hear his voice, that will receive a personal, individual, effectual calling. And he's also speaking about Jews that will hear his voice. We see that in Romans 9, where it says, even us whom he called, not only among the Jews, but also among the Gentiles, that there's a personal, individual, effectual calling where his sheep will hear his voice. Just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay my life down for the sheep, and I have other sheep that are not of this fold, I must bring them also, and they will hear my voice, and they will become one flock with one shepherd. See, the scripture teaches that before the foundation of the world, that God had chosen people from the very beginning to be saved, and then through the course of time, they would receive a personal, individual, effectual calling among the Jews and also among the Gentiles, and they will hear his voice, and they will come to Christ, and they will be one fold with one shepherd. Brothers and sisters, we're always bound to thank God for you, loved of the Lord. From the beginning, God chose you to be saved through the sanctifying work of the Spirit through belief in the truth. So from the very beginning, God chose people to be saved. He's doing a sanctifying work of the Spirit, where his sheep will hear his voice, and they will come to him through the course of time, both Jew and Gentile. And they will become one flock, and all the Father gives to me will come to me, and the one who comes to me I'll by no wise cast out. So Jesus makes an absolute definite statement that all that are given to him from the very beginning, chosen to be saved, will come to him through the course of human history. All the Father gives will come, an absolute statement. Every single one of them, 
that have been given by the Father will come to Christ. They have been given before they even come. And Jesus is saying, all the Father gives to me will come to me. And they come because they will hear his voice. I have other sheep, not of this fold. I must bring them also. They will hear my voice and they will become one flock with one shepherd. See, the scripture teaches that God has saved us with a calling, a personal, individual, effectual calling. He saved us and called us with a holy calling, not because of our own works, but because of his own purposes of grace, which he gave us in Christ Jesus before the ages began. So before the ages began, before the commencement of time, before the foundation of the world, God chose people to be saved, and then he's calling them through the course of time with a personal, individual, effectual calling where his sheep will hear his voice. My sheep will hear my voice and they will become one flock with one shepherd. So God had purposes of grace before the ages began and it says that he saved us and called us with a holy calling. Again, a personal, individual, effectual calling where his sheep hear his voice. Does everybody hear Christ's voice according to scripture? No. Consider your own calling, brethren. Not many wise, not many noble, not many mighty according to the flesh have been called. It goes on to say, but God has chosen the weak and the debased and the despised and the foolish and the things that are not. And that by his own doing, you are in Christ Jesus. So the Bible teaches a personal, individual, effectual calling on people that God has loved from the very beginning. Just like with Jacob and Esau, Jacob I have loved, Esau I have hated. We see that in the scripture that though the twins not having been born, so we're talking about before the foundation of the world, we're talking about before these people were created. That before the twins not having been born, not having done any good or any evil, that God's purpose according to his choice would stand. So it's not of him who works, but of him who calls. It is said that the older shall serve the younger, just as it is written, Jacob I have loved, Esau I have hated. So we see here two individuals. One gets a calling, the other does not. Consider your own calling. We see that Jacob was called. We see this was in the mind of God before these people were even born, though the twins not having been born, not having done any good or any evil, that God's purpose according to his choice would stand. So it's according to God's purpose and according to his choice so that it would stand, so it's not of him who works, but of him who calls. So it's about a personal, individual, effectual calling. So we can see from the scripture, Jacob was one of Jesus' sheep. He heard his voice. He was chosen. He received a personal, individual, effectual calling. And he received it over Esau. And that's why the Bible says, consider your own calling. Not many wise, not many noble, not many mighty, according to flesh, have been called that you have received a calling over others. Now this calling is not because we have deserved it or because we have earned it or because there's some special qualities and attributes in us that are found that are desirable in God's sight. So he's chosen us to be saved. That's not what the Bible teaches. He's chosen the foolish, the debased, the despised, the things that are not, the weak things of the world. He's chosen them to display purposes of grace. We see Paul the apostles say, when God called me by his grace, even from my mother's womb, was well pleased to reveal his son in me that I might preach among the Gentiles. So here we see Paul say, when God called me by his grace. So grace, when you get grace, you get a personal, individual, effectual calling, just like the apostle Paul did. When God called me by his grace, even from my mother's womb. So again, before a person's even born, there's a calling of grace upon their life. And the scripture says, consider your own calling brethren. Not many wise, not many noble, not many mighty according to flesh have been called. So we see that Paul is talking about a calling of grace. When God called me by his grace, even from my mother's womb, was well pleased to reveal his son in me. So he was well pleased to reveal his son in me. Now we see from the words of Jesus, he says, nobody knows the Father except the Son, and nobody knows the Son except the Father, and who the Son chooses to reveal him. So when it comes to people knowing who Christ or the Father is, nobody knows unless the Son chooses to reveal him. Nobody knows the Father except the Son, and nobody knows the Son except the Father, and who the Son chooses to reveal him. Speaking of a universal inability to know who the Father and Son is unless the Son chooses to reveal 
who he is. So when we talk about why we have come to know Christ, it's only because he has chosen to reveal himself. Nobody knows except the Father and the Son and who he chooses to reveal himself to. This is why Jesus in the above verse in John 10, 14 says, I am the good shepherd and I know my own and my own know me. I know my own and my own know me. Well, why do we know him? Nobody knows the Father except the Son. Nobody knows the Son except the Father and who the Son chooses to reveal him. But then Jesus goes on to give the reason why these people that he's speaking to are not believing. He says, but you do not believe because you are not my sheep. My sheep hear my voice. I know them. They follow me. I give them eternal life and they shall never perish and no one will snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all, and no one will snatch them out of his hand. I and my Father are one. Now here, Jesus is not only talking about people at that time, he's talking about believers all throughout the course of human history, that they will hear his voice, he will give them eternal life, they will never perish, that they were given by the Father. He says, my Father who has given them to me is greater than all. And remember what Jesus said in John 6, 37, all the Father gives to me will come to me. The one who comes to me I'll by no wise cast out. All the Father gives will come. They will come through the course of time. They will come to Jesus Christ, every single one of them. They will hear his voice. They will get a personal, individual, effectual calling. And they shall never be cast out. That is, they shall never perish. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them. They follow me. That is, they get a a personal, individual, a factual calling, and I give them eternal life, and they will never perish, and no one will snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all, and no one will snatch them out of his hand. I and my Father are one. So here again we have Jesus speaking about those that are given to him by the Father, that they will hear his voice, every single one of them. Are you one of those people that have heard his voice Thousands of years after Jesus has said this, have you come to Christ? Do you have eternal life and you will never perish? Well, according to Jesus, the reason why is because you were given by the Father, my Father who has given them to me. And Jesus had already said that all the Father gives to me will come to me. So the reason why you came to Jesus, the ultimate causation, is because the Father had chose people before the foundation of the world to be saved. And by purposes of grace, they will receive a personal, individual, effectual calling. We see Jesus reference this at the beginning of John chapter 10. Truly, truly, I say to you, the one who does not enter by the door into the fold of the sheep, but climbs up some other way, is a thief and a robber. But the one who enters by the door is a shepherd of the sheep. To him the doorkeeper opens, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. So he calls his own sheep by name, a personal, individual, effectual calling. So he says, and the sheep will hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name, and he leads them out. When he puts all his own sheep outside, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. However, a stranger they simply will not follow but will flee from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus told them these things as a figure of speech, but they did not understand the things which he was saying to them and what it meant. See, they did not understand, which is the disposition of the natural man. The natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness on him, and he cannot understand them because they're spiritually discerned. These people do not understand what Jesus is saying and the spiritual significance of it. Jesus is saying that his sheep will not hear the voice of a stranger. Have you ever noticed that in physical reality, all these other people that are following these false Christs, that they're listening to these false Christs? Well, they're not Christ's sheep, because Christ's sheep will not hear the voice of a stranger. They'll hear the voice of Christ. My sheep hear my voice. I know them. They follow me. They don't follow the voice of a stranger. The reason why people are following the voice of strangers in this physical reality when we see false Christ prop up and then people start to follow them, it's because they're not of Christ's sheep. If they were of Christ's sheep, they would not hear the voice of a stranger. 
they will receive a personal, individual, effectual calling from God himself, and they'll recognize the true Christ. It says, to him the doorkeeper opens, the sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name. And we see the pre-incarnate Christ speaking about this very same thing. That there's a personal, individual, effectual calling that Christ has on his sheep. And we see the pre-incarnate Christ in Isaiah 43.10 say, Fear not, for I am with thee. I will bring thy seed from the east and gather thee from the west. I will say to the north, give up, and to the south, keep not back. Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Even everyone that is called by my name, for I have created him for my glory. I have formed him, I have made him. So notice this, everyone that is called by my name. All the Father gives to me will come to me, and the one who comes to me I by no wise cast out. Everyone that is called by my name I have created for my glory. Those he predestined he called, those he called he justified, those he justified he glorified. So the scripture teaches that God predestines people, that he predecides their destination, and then he calls those people, those he predestined he called, those he justified he glorified. So we see everyone that is called by my name I have created for my glory. Those he predestined he called, those he called he justified, those he justified he glorified. We see that there's a personal, individual, effectual calling. And notice, everyone that is called by my name, this is speaking that about all the Father gave to Christ. All the Father gives to me will come to me. The one who comes to me I'll by no wise cast out. Bring forth the blind people that have eyes and the deaf that have ears. This is speaking about the universal disposition of humanity that they are blinded to the light of the gospel, in whose case the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelieving, that they cannot see the light of the gospel, which displays the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. So we weren't born into this world just seeing the light of the gospel. We were born into this world being blinded to the light of the gospel. And then God, even though we have eyes to see, we are blinded to the light of the gospel. And then God gives us spiritual eyes so that we see the glory of Christ through the gospel, in whose case the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelieving, that they cannot see the light of the gospel, which displays the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. So we could not see or hear spiritual things unless God had granted that to us. The secrets of the kingdom of God have been given to you, but to others that has not been given. So seeing they do not see and hearing they do not hear, at least they turn and understand and be forgiven, which is salvation to turn and understand and be forgiven. Jesus said what resulted in that is you have been given the secrets of the kingdom of God by which you now see and hear. The secrets of the kingdom of God have been given to you, but to others it has not been given. So seeing they do not see and hearing they do not hear, at least they turn and understand and be forgiven. So we see this verse in Isaiah say, bring forth the blind people that have eyes and the deaf that have ears. Jesus calls forth people that are otherwise blind and deaf, do not hear or see things relating to spiritual things in the gospel, and God heals them so they have eyes to see and ears to hear. Let all the nations be gathered together, and let the people be assembled. Who among them can declare this, and show us former things? Let them bring forth their witnesses, that they may be justified, or let them hear and say it is truth. You are my witnesses, declare the Lord, my servant whom I have chosen, that you may know and understand and believe that I am he. Before me there was no God form, nor shall there be after me. I alone am the Savior. So we see the pre-incarnate Christ, our Savior, saying that he has chosen us, that we may know and understand and believe that he is he. Essential things for salvation, that without knowing and understanding and believing that he was he, we could not be saved. So he is our Savior and that he has chosen us to know and understand and believe that he is he, and also provided a sacrifice that takes away our sin. So we see the Father in eternity past has salvation set in his mind on a particular people that he is going to save. Jesus Christ does a redemptive work for those people, and the Holy Spirit, through the course of human history, applies a spiritual, effectual calling on those people 
where they come to Christ, where they're able to hear and see spiritual things by the work of the Spirit on the ones God has chosen to be saved. Brothers and sisters, we're always bound to thank God for you, loved of the Lord. From the beginning, God chose you to be saved through the sanctifying work of the Spirit and belief in the truth. So there's a sanctifying work of the Spirit on the ones God has chosen to be saved so they believe in the truth. You are my witnesses, declare the Lord, my servant whom I have chosen, that you may know and understand and believe that I am he. So we see that Jesus has chosen us so that we may know and understand and believe that he is he. Now, a lot of people think they chose Jesus. Jesus in his earthly ministry says, you did not choose me, but I chose you and I appointed you that you should go bear fruit and your fruit should remain. So the mistaken premise is that we chose Jesus. Jesus corrects that mistaken premise. You did not choose me, but I chose you and I appointed you that you should go bear fruit. We see from scriptures that he chose us before the foundation of the world. From the very beginning, he chose us to be saved. There's a personal, individual, effectual calling where he calls his own sheep by name. They will hear his voice. And according to Christ, all of them will come to him through the course of time. All the Father gives to me will come to me. All the ones that were chosen to know and understand and believe that Jesus is the Christ. You are my witnesses, declare the Lord, my servant whom I have chosen, that you may know and understand and believe that I am he. So the reason why we have come to know and understand and believe that Jesus is the Christ is all because of his grace, a calling of grace. When God called me by his grace, even from my mother's womb, was well pleased to reveal his son in me. Not only can the Apostle Paul say that, but every one of us can say that because that's what the Bible teaches about God's grace, that it's a personal, individual, effectual calling. And that he has chosen us that we may know and understand and believe that he is he. So I'm going to leave these considerations on the grill, brothers and sisters, and I hope that you're having a great day and you're growing in the grace and knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ and the things that the scripture teaches about how God has loved us from the very beginning. Brothers and sisters, we're always bound to thank God for you. Loved of the Lord, from the beginning, God chose you to be saved through the sanctifying work of the Spirit and belief in the truth. So God bless you, peace to you, take care, and I hope your night or day is going good. Gonna be here soon.